the rear end of my salvage 2017 Volkswagen Golf R is finally starting to take shape. If all goes well, hopefully by the end of today's episode, I'll be able to drive the car around the block a little bit. Now we can't go too far because I don't have a plate and the car is still not registered, but I'll be able to drive it around my apartment complex. Now the only thing stopping me from really driving this car right now is because there's no exhaust on the back of it, which I'd like to get installed today and also the side skirts. Now to get you up to speed, in the last episode, I was able to successfully repaint and reinstall the rear end on the Volkswagen. I was able to not only paint match the factory e-coat, but also the base and clear coats on the car using spray cans of all things. Now, once the paint was dry, I was then able to reinstall the rear end for the first time ever. That includes mounting the brand new taillights for good, as well as the rear reinforcement and even the new blind spot monitoring sensors which got destroyed in the accident. The best part was the rear bumper lined up perfectly and practically all the codes are finally gone from the car. Meaning that I am just moments away from being able to drive the car for the first time. Now I'm going to start off with the exhaust because I think that's probably the hardest to put on and then we'll slap the side skirts on it but for starters I need to fix the exhaust because one of the exhaust hangers is broken. As you can see this is what a you know unbroken exhaust hanger looks like. And this one, there's nothing to hang it to. Now, luckily I did order this part and it is in. So we need to swap this out really quick and then we can put that whole exhaust back on the car. Now I'm pretty sure the exhaust hanger is made from aluminum, which is why it broke off so easily. Had it have been steel, I probably could have just bent it back into place, but you know, oh well. Now I know they sell special tools to remove these exhaust hangers because these things are on there and I mean they are on there. They're not coming off that easy. I probably spent a good 10 minutes trying to get it off and it just wouldn't budge. So that's when I decided to try it the other way and it actually worked. Using some adjustable joint pliers, I was able to push it through and off it came. Oh, I could also do it that way. Using WD-40 on the new one, I was able to just slide it on with ease. Now it's time to actually get the exhaust back on the car. It's a bit harder to do on the floor, but after jacking the car up, I was able to connect the middle pipes together. And then all I had to do was figure out a way to get the muffler screwed back into place and up about two feet in the air. Keep in mind, this exhaust is like an easy 50 pounds, so it was quite difficult to move. But after a good idea, using some bricks I found, Sean and I were able to get the exhaust high enough to where the brackets lined up with the holes and I could lightly screw them into place. With everything reconnected and sitting now how I wanted, I could then go back and actually tighten all the bolts back up. It's just two screws in the middle on the exhaust clamp and then two in the rear holding the muffler to the car. Alrighty guys, so it is a new day. The exhaust is on perfect. It fit up perfectly. There's no damage to it. Um, I wanted to put on the side skirts now, but I noticed that the side skirts need some 3M adhesive tape, which I don't have. That's coming in from Amazon for like 10 bucks tomorrow. So we'll be doing that later on. So I figured while I'm waiting, I might as well do the oil change on the car. The car is actually throwing uh, just a service, you know, uh, note that says I need to do an oil change, but also if I'm gonna start driving this car. I definitely need to do one because it's been sitting for a long time. So I wanna do an oil change really quickly with you guys. Uh, and then we'll, we'll see what we need to do next. Kind of see hopefully in the camera if it comes out clear where the uh, 3M adhesive tape kind of needed to be. You can see right here on this kind of angle all the way down there needs 3M tape and this is all dirty now so it's not going to stick. So when that comes in 
We'll slap these back on the car. The first step to doing an oil change on the Golf R is getting the front end up just a little. This will give you the needed room to slide a pan underneath to catch the oil. And I'm honestly quite surprised with how easy it is to do an oil change on this car. Like it's almost too easy. Once I had the car up on ramps, I loosened the oil filter housing with a wrench and then just simply using a flathead screwdriver, I could unscrew the drain plug with like two turns. This was scary easy to do. Everything looks good though. Everything looks good. I cut a hole in this because this was being a pain in my ass for those that are listening. Never buy the Walmart uh, like oil cash can. This thing that you see here, it's horrible. Well, it's good, but you just gotta cut a hole in it and then it's good. I'll show you in a second what I mean and we'll see if it was a good idea or not. But I'll let this drain out. I had an a Audi A3 before this and it had a metal uh, drain plug and it had a metal oil pan. This is plastic with a plastic one, which is kind of silly, but whatever. I, I guess to each their own. But once this is done draining out, I'll just lube up the new one and then I will uh, put it on. I guess, let me show you what I'm talking about. Volkswagen Audi cheaped out and they're using this little thing. This is the new drain plug, plastic, because it's got a plastic pan underneath, which is so silly. I guess we'll put a little oil around this little seal, little O-ring, but that's it. I just used a screwdriver and I was able to unscrew it. So, oh well, pretty, pretty silly. I mean, you hit, so you lower this car and you hit a bump, good luck. And that's it. That is, talk about easy. That's literally it. That's so silly. That's literally it. That just is so strange. It's not even tight. Like, that's it. That's with a screwdriver. Yeah, that's as far as it, we're going. That's fair enough. Whatever. With the oil out of the car, it's time to replace the old filter with a new one as well as a new O-ring, making sure to put new oil around the ring to ensure a proper seal. All right, now I know what you're thinking, but I do not want to hear it. There's been plenty of studies that prove that this oil is totally fine for being Walmart brand. Totally fine, totally fine. And I've used it for a long time and it's and it's fine. Full synthetic, 5W30. This takes about around five-ish, five and a half quarts. I got a little extra of some like liquid molly from the for the RS3, but we'll see, we'll see how much it takes. We'll just get it off the ramps after we get some oil in it. We'll go from there. With the oil change done, it's time to clean up my mess. Hopefully now you can see what I did to the Walmart oil catch can, as this is like the only way to prevent the oil from bouncing off the shallow surface and going absolutely everywhere. All right, so it's a new day and the next thing I need to do is reinstall the side skirts back on the car. It's so much easier taking them off than reinstalling and that's because they got about a 10 foot strip of 3M tape that goes around the side of them and I was able to pick up some for 10 bucks of 3M tape on uh, Amazon. But I have to prep the surface, clean it, and then we'll reinstall it back on the car. This is by far the most tedious and annoying thing I've done to the car so far. Each of these side skirts has about 10 feet of dirty 3M tape that needs to come off and be replaced in order to get a good fitment on the car. The best method I've found so far was using a razor blade and just scraping them off inch 
by inch until I had the entire thing done. My fingers were going numb by the time I was done, but it was well worth it to see the final result. Once both the surfaces were cleaned, I could then lay down the new 3M tape to the side skirts, making sure to press them down hard as this is truly how you activate the tape. Now, in order to have enough room to install them, I turned the wheel to reveal the screw hole that mounts the side skirts to the car. Once it was lined up, I could push down and the side skirt will fit into a groove on the car. Then I can start peeling off the 3M tape while pushing down at the same time as this will lock it into place on the car. The last step is just putting back the four or five screws that secures it to the car for good. And now all I have to do is just repeat it all again on the other side. Okay, so before we take the car out on its first ever test drive, there's a few things we need to do really quick. The first is I finally got the bumper bracket mounts because the old one broke off the rear. So I wanna install that super quick. And then I've now discovered a new problem, which is actually kind of scary. And I wanna show you guys it. And hopefully if you have a GTI or maybe it's just a Golf R thing, I want you to let me know down in the comments below if you've had this problem because this, it scared the crap out of me because I thought I had a bigger problem than I think it is, but I'll show you guys that in a minute. So really quickly, I just wanna swap out the rear bumper bracket because as you can see, the old ones are broken. This is super simple to do as it's just a few screws holding them down. And then also for those wondering, I do replace that broken air vent uh, off camera another day. Alrighty, so it's a bit dirty in here, but I want to show you guys the last problem that I found on this car. And I'll also show you majority of the dash lights are gone, which is incredible. But um, so when I drive the car and I first tap the brakes, there's a really loud, scary clunking sound. And it only seems to happen when I put it for the first time braking in going and drive and the first time braking when I go in reverse. So it seems like it's a brake problem and not something else, but I want to show you. All right, ready? All right, so first and foremost, we really don't have any more problems. There's only that, you know, front adaptive cruise control, but that can get solved later. None of these problems are really uh, anything major, but I wanna show you. All right, ready? All right, so take a listen. I'll let the car idle down and then I want you to listen. So you're gonna hear this really loud clunk. I'll put it in drive. Ready? Not steer it into the, the garage door. You heard that? That metal clunk? I'll do. I'll see if I can put it in reverse. Listen again, ready? Oh, right there. Yet again, I'll put it in drive. You heard it? It's real loud and it sounds scary because that's metal on metal. Just like that. And that again. So here's what I think it is. So I have a feeling, and I want to know if anyone other, any other Golf R owners have this problem, but I have a feeling it's these brake pads that aren't sitting because look at the gap between it. These must be aftermarket. There's a massive gap and then no gap on the bottom. So when I drive forward, the pads slide down and you hear this metal on metal smacking and in reverse, this smacks on the top. So I'm gonna to try to grease these on both sides and hopefully 
that solves the problem. Otherwise, maybe maybe it's the rust on these, but I, I really think it has to do with the pad sliding and not being, uh, you know, with some anti, anti seize on it. So if my hunch is correct, then this should be an easy fix. I basically need to just put some sort of metal shim in that gap and it should stop the sound. Either way, it's still a poor design flaw that leaves a scary result for people that don't know any better. Now, in order to inspect the sound uh, a bit better, I removed the wheel and unscrewed the caliper by using a wrench and socket at the same time, as this prevents the nut from spinning. Then the caliper should just come right off. All right, so this is definitely the problem. That's way too loud. I don't know why these have so much unnecessary play in them, which is so silly, but holy hell. So either I need to put something in there to shut it up, which I think is the only answer, or put like lube on it, but freaking Thinking shoving something in there is gonna be my only option. All right, so the moment we've all been waiting for a quick test drive in this car. I'm only gonna go around uh, my apartment complex to stay on private property because I don't have a plate yet, but this is gonna be the true test. Uh, a little bit nervous. We should be totally fine though. The first time I've ever driven something like, you know, a rebuilt car, fully rebuilt, it just feels a bit different, but I wanna test it out. We'll see how it goes. Um, the brakes are gonna have to wait for another day until I can figure out something to kind of wedge in between that's not gonna hit the rotor. Unless you guys have another idea, feel free to let me know down in the comments besides replacing the pads, but everything should be good. The bumper, I'm not too worried about the bumper falling off anymore, but uh, I, I don't know what to expect. Keep an eye on the coolant and everything, although coolant is topped off, we should be good. Like it sounds good. Real scary though, the whole rear, I mean the rear is good, it's on, everything's good, but it just, there's no, the inside, I didn't, I didn't finish the inside of the car yet. We're still waiting on the mat and stuff before I can be done with it, but. I mean, everything works. This sketch, but it drives totally fine. Everything seems to drive fine. Everything sounds good. Everything looks good, no problems. Pretty surreal, pretty crazy. Let's do another lap. Really try to get the the brakes set in. I'm like afraid to put it in sport. Do I put it in sport, guys? All right, I'll put it in sport. Now we're in sport. I love the DCT, dual, dual clutch transmission. Exhaust opened up. Oh yeah. You can hear the turbo spool. Alrighty guys, so that is gonna be it for today's episode. We're so freaking close to finishing this build. It's really surreal how quick it's going by and the crazy stuff that we've had to do. Really the last things left is just putting all the interior trim back in the rear and then uh, getting the car painted and registered and it's done, it's literally done. We'll be doing a uh, price build cost update in the next episode hopefully the parts come in to put the rear back and we'll do the update but with all that being said if you're liking this content then make sure to smash the like button turn on post notifications subscribe and i will see you in the next episode Peace.